All right, Ember Light Studios again. Let's talk about animations for a minute. So we want to get animations from Mixamo into Godot working with our character. Uh, the main problem is our character is in an A pose, and Mixamo expects all of its characters to be in a T pose. But there's one way to get it to work that I've found. So let's let's go over that workflow. So first, we're going to go in Blender. We're going to open up MPFB2. We're going to create a new human from scratch, and then we're going to scroll down and give it a rig. And I'm going to give it the Mixamo rig. Now the reason I'm giving it the Mixmo rig is not just because I'm uploading to Mixmo, because I'm actually going to use the game engine rig in Godot and remap the animations using Godot's built-in humanoid retargeting. But I'm going to use the Mixmo rig because it doesn't have a root bone. In Godot, I'm going to use the, the, the game engine rig because it does have a root bone, and any animations that I personally author are probably going to use root motion. However, I've found that if you upload the rig with the root bone using the game engine rig, if you upload this to Mixamo, it can put some funny animations on the root bone that you may not want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Mixamo rig. It's going to give me the animations out with no root bone at all, and then it shouldn't be a problem in Godot. So that's what I'm going to do. So I've added the rig, and then I'm just going to export an FPX. Then I'm going to go to Mixamo, and I'm going to upload the character. And I'm going to select my FPX. And then I'm going to wait a minute while it does the auto-rigging and gets everything ready. Okay, and there's our character, ready to go. Next I'm going to pick an animation, so I was thinking maybe I'm going to build a game with the cover system, and I'm going to need something like this, where he's standing, but then he goes to cover up against the wall. So I'm going to go ahead and download this animation. Now this is very important. When you download the animation, you must download it with the skin. If you download it without the skin, it won't work because it will, again, assume you're in a T-pose. If you grab it with the skin, it will work with the A-pose character, so you must do it with the skin. You also must do single clips at a time. If you try to grab any of the packs with 20 or 30 animations in them, it also won't work. The arms will be all messed up. So that, those are the limitations that I've found. So let's download it with the skin. Let's go back to Blender. Let's do import FBX. Here's the one I just downloaded. This is one I downloaded earlier. I'm going to scroll down and check this ignore leaf bones option so we don't get these annoying bones sticking out of his head and stuff. And then import FBX. And there we go. So there's our animation. Looks pretty good. Now, let's see if we can animate this other guy. If we go to the dope sheet and the action editor, we do have these actions, but, oh, there we go. But you see, it's not moving right, and I think this has to do with the scale. Uh, it could be the scale, or it could be just the bones are named differently. No, the bones look the same to me, so I'm guessing it has something to do with the scale of the model coming out of Mixamo. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete the original human rig, and we're not going to use him anymore and his mesh. And this will be our base rig for future animations. Okay, so we've got this one animation. Let's grab another one.
Um, let's do the opposite layer and cover. And you stand up. There we go. Okay, so now we've got the opposite animations. One where you're standing and you go to cover, and the other where you're in cover and you go to stand. Now, cleaning up some of these animations is kind of a detailed um, video in itself, so I'm not going to go too in-depth on it. Um, I'm just going to try to get these animations working in Godot. So we actually don't need the second model. We can go ahead and delete them. and his mesh. And we now have the um, both actions here. So this is our stand to cover. I'll go ahead and rename it. Let me choose the rig. So this is stand, or excuse me, cover to stand. So I opened, uh, to get here, I, I went to the dope sheet and then changed it from dope sheet to action editor here. Okay, so there's one action. And then we've got this one that's kind of broken. So I'm going to uncheck this box, which will force us to keep it. And we will get rid of that next time we load the file. And here's our other animation, which is stand to cover. Okay. So we have two actions here cover to stand and stand to cover and they both have the fake user so that they will be saved with the file but what you can also do is open the nonlinear animation editor and push these down the stack um, let's go back to the dope sheet put them on this one go back to the nonlinear animation and push this one down also okay so now we've got both animations on the NLA stack Great. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and export this as a GLTF. It's going to go in our project. I'm going to put it alongside the other animations I have here. And I'll just leave it as um, test animation for now. Okay, so let's go back to Godot. And the workflow that I use in Godot is that I import it as an animation library. So if we open the animation settings up, you see you still have this phantom action that doesn't actually do anything. So what you need to do, actually I can show you how to get rid of that. Let's just save this as a file. Um, I'll just leave it as untitled and then reload it. And now, if I go back to my action editor in the dope sheet, there's only two. And now, if I export it again, hopefully it will be gone. There we go, we have two actions. Now I don't really want to import the model, so what I'm going to do is go to this import tab here, and instead of importing this as a scene, I want to import it as an animation library. There's some more settings, but I think that's good enough. So we can hit re-import. Okay. Now, the scene the default scene that I have set up for uh, animating characters is here. It's just an animation tree with an animation player under it. And 
if you click here and then manage animations, you see that I have one animation library already added to this animator. We can load the other one now. And there are, there are our other two animations. So there we go. We now have four animations. So I can go back to this scene and let's just change the animation of this one. Oh, we cannot actually. Um, what we can do <coughs> we can edit it in here. Um, Actually, we may be able to edit it here also. Let's see. Maybe make local. No, it seems we cannot. Okay. So let's add the cover to stand animation and let's just make that our entry point for the state machine just to test it out. Okay, and then I'm just going to save the scene. And now, if I reset the human so it reloads the animator, ah, okay, I know why it doesn't work. Because the rig is the Mixamo rig, and we actually need. we need to import it with the retargeted rig. So what we do is we select the skeleton 3D in the import settings of the GLB file. We change the bone map to a new bone map. Click on it. Change the profile to a new skeletal, skeletal profile humanoid. Everything should match correctly. And then just hit OK or re-import. And there we go. So now now it did work. Um, this animation is not really a looping animation, so it just gets to the end and stops. I can make it a looping animation artificially by coming in here and changing the loop mode. Let's do ping pong actually, so it goes back and forth. And there you go. So the animation is now on our character. And that is how you get animations working in Humanizer from Mixamo. So um, if you have any questions, let us know.